Yo, 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 welcome to another edition of the Geeky Bros Podcast and Happy New Year. I'm your boy Tactics. Yo, it's just Darcy here and Happy New Year to everybody. And this is Big Geek Kumar. Happy New Year, all. Cool, cool, cool. I, I, I guess no other comments. All right. Well, uh, we'll just get right into it. I thought well, we were going to like actually, expand on we that should, We bit. should also say happy, uh, sorry, uh, Merry Christmas because we kind of like, you know, we all got stuff with our own Christmas stuff to do a show. So Merry Christmas, y'all. Yeah. That's true. That is Merry true. Merry. Merry Christmas. Well, hope you guys had a Merry Christmas, even though the world is kind of still on fire right now. Yeah, we're, we're back in mm-hmm. lockdown and I don't celebrate Christmas, so. <laughs> Facts. all right umar what's on the agenda for today so uh there have been uh i say we go with geeky news first gotta talk about that before we go into our review of the new wonder woman wonder woman movie that came out on christmas day online also in theaters as well but like yeah no no (laughs) no one went to that (laughs) you know and they keep posting this like oh it's coming out and then and, and in theaters i keep thinking like what which theaters? <laughs> like, I Theater Bro. Yeah. What really? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Like, I, I bet you we can make a short list of the world and it wouldn't be exhaustive right now. <laughs> well, actually, Japan is doing pretty well right now because, like, Demon Slayer is like it's now become the uh, largest growing uh, film uh, of all time uh, because of the fact that of COVID. But anyway, uh, geeky news. First set of geeky news, Ray Fisher has once again come on online to basically trash the president or I think the CEO. I can't I think it's the president of the WB. Basically saying that he does not want to work under any circumstances with anything that he is involved with. And seeing as how he's the president of WB, I don't think he's going to be cyborg anymore. Yeah, it, it definitely feels like that, and, and and you're correct. It's it's president of uh of the the WBDC like portion of it. Um, yeah, that like, yeah, <laughs> does not feel like we're gonna get get much cyborg. Though, I mean, do we really think that we're gonna get much more of Zack Snyder's universe? I know like some people, some people are hopeful for that, and some people are, are uh rumoring certain things, but none of that stuff feels like strong at this point. Do we even feel like there is gonna be? I, I guess there was the the Flash stuff, but I mean that's dicey. <laughs> yeah, I would say that the only thing we have currently to look forward to of Zack Snyder's DC world is, um, well, The Flash, like you mentioned. Well, we have Justice League uh, miniseries coming out. Uh yeah, I mean that's that stuff's already done, and I'm sure he's already done his work with Wonder with Woman. Uh, now that like the new movie came out, Wonder Woman three is coming out, but doubtful that there would be any cyborg in that. Just like, no. like story wise, even if we don't, ha- even if you, you could find the one or two random, you know, animated series or, um, or like comic references of a Wonder Woman cyborg like team up what how would you make that work with these two characters like it's just it would be i could see a wonder woman aquaman team up way more likely because they're popping movies in, in as far as their universe is concerned and like they they just look like they would make more sense on screen together than than cyborg and wonder woman for like two hours <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay l- let me ask you guys something r- regarding ray fisher now, ever since his post came out, I have been hearing, well, I should say, I, I went on some of the posts and read the comments. I ordinarily never do that, but with this, I kind of wanted to see what the white man would say. And what... <laughs> I, let me just snug that in. Go on. <laughs> uh, well, it did turn out <laughs> that the whole white man had, a un- well, aside from a, a few uh, racial slurs that I will not uh, repeat, the one comment I did see come out a few times was um don't f with the money you idiot mm. oh, umar i have a question before we get into that piece uh is the reason why you won't repeat those racial slurs is because it's your new year's resolution since the last episode we did you uh you weren't really liking the black people very much 
We all know that I was a joke. <laughs> My best friends are black. No, no, I'm kidding. Uh, Umar's New Year's resolution, not hate black people. Got it. Uh, uh, yeah, that don't mess with the money thing. Yeah, that 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 feels like a, a racially charged statement half the time, right? Like, like yes, technically you should be cautious of when you mess with the money but if you're going to mess with the money you know th- there should be a good reason for it right you know it shouldn't be some some uh silly and i don't get the feeling that it's something silly like for instance let's take let's take the fact that gal gadot had a problem that got resolved because clearly she's way closer to the larger sum of the money right yeah. you know there's a lot more she has a lot more power right like her and Patty jenkins getting 10 million means she's got a lot of power she did she matters from WB's perspective, they're selling toys galore around her. All the young women are probably the young girls out there represent a larger growth in their their revenue than they've ever seen before. So, yeah, but like th- th- they handle her stuff. They don't handle Ray Fisher stuff. Right. So how about you, T? Um, I'm torn on the subject because I, I feel like. I respect what he's doing in terms of him being very vocal about his views and how he's he was mistreated. Yeah. Um <clears throat> he is he is fucking with the money, but I do <laughs> see that um you know it 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 really just it really depends on on you know what his intention is overall in, in, in that sense, right? Like and Sadly, he can be replaced very easily because he doesn't have the, he's not in the same position as Gal Gadot in terms of the power, right? Like he's a he's a I don't want to say go as far as saying he's a secondary character, but you know, let's face it, when it comes to the Justice League, especially the movie that we got, there's the top tier got the top tier, like Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Aquaman kind of like slowly crept his way in there just because of the success of the solo movie, but no, I feel like like honestly, like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, they are essentially the top tier of DC. Period. They are the holy trinity. Right. That's yeah. I, I agree with that. But I mean, I, I just mean in terms of the financial success from the movies that were right. that, that they garnered. Right. That like Aquaman is kind of like in that same boat as well right now. Right. Yeah. So, um, but the thing is, he's replaceable because it's like look at look what they did with um, Terrence Howard in um, in Iron Man. He spoke out of he spoke out of turn and then they easily replaced him with Don Cheadle and like like just like that. And what do you speak out on again? Because man, that guy he, he I, I like Terrence Howard sometimes and I don't like Terrence Howard sometimes. I, I think he's got an attitude. So it it's a, a matter of he said she said kind of thing, but it's like um he he had some issues with um their contract or, or their, they they basically kind of uh gave him a bullshit contract when they were renewing for him to be in future films. Gotcha. They they originally pitched him a, a set amount of money and it was going to be closer to RDJ's um like um RDJ's budget or, or his um his his salary. wage or his salary, right? But um once the success of Iron Man, you know, skyrocketed and I, I like I, RDJ essentially like, you know, he basically revived yeah he revived his career essentially right so they they obviously had to offer him more money and um terrence howard wasn't he was was, barely in that movie yeah he was barely in the movie but he was he was complaining about how it was was like no you guys originally pitched me this and i think what it was was they took they took the money that they were going to originally offer to terrence howard and they gave it to rdj oh yeah Okay, yeah, that I mean that 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 makes that makes sense as to why he'd be upset, especially if it's mm-hmm. like it's one thing if let's, let's say you know you're going to get a million dollars and he's going to get two million dollars, and then all of a sudden it's like okay, y- he's getting three million dollars, you're getting five hundred thousand dollars, you know, yeah. like you know, like it's like why did my money go down? Okay, his money's going up, he's going to get more screen time. Keep my money where my money's at, you know. I heard he uh, also had issues with RDJ as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. They, I, they, they, well, what I heard from that was that. He had issues because RDJ didn't speak up about the the renewal of the contract in terms of that in terms of the money uh, going more money of, of his going to RDJ. Originally. Yeah, I, I agree. With that, I, I understand thing, that too. Yeah. One thing I'm glad though is I like Don Cheadle's their, their chemistry better. Agreed. They 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 play off each other <laughs> much better. Like honestly, Terrence Howard, he was so flat in the role. Yeah, and the thing is, is like even like. I mean, I don't, yeah, I guess so. But like, I feel like Terrence Howard 
is more like he's more he can't fall to 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 being a second tier character as well um the way he acts and stuff like that it, it, you're kind of having two a types kind of fighting each other a bit instead of um don Cheeto can go he can play that 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 supportive and then jump into the lead and go he can go back and forth he's just he's a really talented person so yeah um but going back to 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 uh ray fisher you know like the whole thing i feel like i really want to know what's what what happened behind the scenes i really need to know this because of like my my worry is that like there's two sides of this one um just Whedon comes we find out he's like a giant racist i don't know he's like 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 a whole bunch of horrible stuff right okay great then all of what you are putting your your movie careers from what we can tell unless this zack snyder stuff drops and we're like oh my god ray fisher's an unbelievable actor like give him oscars give him oscars right um unless that kind of happens which one? Yeah, which is basically like, well, I mean, there's a chance he's a really good actor, right? And I'm it just, could be that he may be the standout. Like, we like just yeah. could be still as bad as before, but there's more cyborg, and yeah. we're like, holy shit. I'm just saying, like, his acting's great. Not that the movie is like yeah. Oscar, yeah. just like him alone, you're like really impressed <clears> with him, right? Then then his career in the movie is going down and i don't know how much this is going to affect his stage career because he's he was he was a theater, theatrical uh, actor more than he was uh his yeah. first time stepping into like the, the 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 silver screen right so he's essentially like tanking his his, his chances at the, at the silver screen potentially so i want it to be like <clears throat> a good reason as to why he's he's, he's tanking it like, i would hate for it to come out and it's like it's just you you get the details and you're like it's really not that like uh, ideally the truth but you just you're like it's like really like that's you put that much in the line and it was is this it's just so much that's not being said that it's kind of like i don't know it's hard to tell if it's worth it or not yeah well, i mean he did well in the theater <clears throat> in the like theater realm and like i think just the fact that he was on the silver screen for a short period of time with the justice league that you know maybe Depend like depending on how all of this kind of unfolds, like if you know he does end up tanking his his movie career, uh, at least he has a theater stuff to fall back on, and maybe that just because of the, he's had that exposure, he's had a mix of both worlds, that'll give him more opportunities in that kind of realm. Yeah. Honestly, his his taking on WB and also the higher ups, it kind of is reminiscent of John Boyega mm -hmm. to me about how he was like, uh, uh, when the third star Wars movie came out, a sequel, uh, <clears throat> when the end of the sequel trilogy happened, he kind of was like cut ties with Disney and just kind of, well, he was also, uh, very heavily involved in the BLM, but like he also was attacking how they treated him and, and his character, throughout the entire series so it kind of is reminiscent of that to me i think because it's associated with the bml BLM, LM, sorry um that it it kind of helped his career in that regard too because uh that that community was already getting heavily attacked in the midst of you know COVID and the, all the protests that were happening and that the fact that him as as, as an actor like personally went down there and you know was with the people and whatnot and he he started proclaiming all of those like powerful statements and, and whatnot like it it spoke volumes as to him as a character right with ray fisher yes it's similar in that regard but it's um it's, it's not as powerful it's not as powerful because it's just like he's like a lone ranger fighting his fighting as yeah. a one man show kind of thing right so and the only like, people who've supported him has been uh, jason momoa yeah and Gal Gadot kind of kind of did. weak weak sauce weak yeah, sauce for yeah. Sure. you know i i just i it's again i agree with you guys and i just i just hope that it's like you, we get something we're like okay you re, it is really this matters and it's and you're fighting the right fight um and hopefully it doesn't turn out to be something that's you know yeah. weaker so yeah, so uh, the the last bit of uh, news before we go on to our next uh, gen item, uh, news from the from the Batman set again. Uh, now this time it's it's coming from people surprisingly somewhat sympathetic towards uh, Robert Pattinson. Okay, Turn, okay. Turns out that uh, the news is that Matt Reeves is almost breaking Robert Pattinson's spirit. Uh, and this is in the uh, situation that uh, Matt Reeves is a perfectionist, 
and has uh, um, Robert Pattinson re like doing take after take after take in the Batman costume for hours at a time uh, and like just like keep pushing him, keep pushing him. He's like, no, 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 that's not good enough. It's not good enough. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Another take, another take. And people are starting to say that Robert Pattinson is like allegedly or rumored to be close to uh, like losing spirit. Now, the article I read, well, actually the two articles I read, they both made a caveat by saying that at the same time, Matt Reeves is fully aware of what the like, the pressures he's under. This movie has had a lot of this movie has had a lot in its in its, in its pre production, uh, like a lot, and then a lot during its production uh, related to like rewrites, uh, changing of casts, uh, who's in charge, <laughs> scripts. Then and then when filming began, COVID, and then uh, like a very difficult uh, star. So. I can get why Matt Reeves is like trying to be perfect because he's not trying to just like get a movie out. He's actually trying to get the movie he wanted to get to in it from the from, from the beginning. So with this new information, what do you guys think? T, how about let's start with you this time? Um well when you said that, my <clears throat> I immediately went to my my day like memories of my days working with Darcy um when we were doing music, right? Yeah. And there'd be times when like, you know, and like just full full disclosure, I'm not an actual I'm not a rapper. Like I, I can rap, but I'm I'm not putting myself out there as like being a rapper or whatever. But they're on know, Spotify, y'all. <laughs> so <laughs> when whenever um whenever I meet with Darcy, who like, you know, he does music like he produces music and stuff like that. So sometimes like we'll we'll come up with these ideas and like um create create songs together. And he'll give me a beat and then I'll take it home and then I'll work out some lyrics or whatever and then I'll present it to Darcy. And I'm thinking before like we even get started, I'm thinking I got hot shit. Like, you know, he's gonna love my bars, you know, everything's gonna be good. I'm like, I got everything down. I spit for him and he'll be like, ah, it's it's not quite there. Let's let's do it again. So I'll be like, oh, okay, okay, cool. So I do it again, you know, I'm thinking, oh, that that's the one. Cut that, let's let's get out of here. And he's just like Ah, there's just still yeah, you, we, we got to do this. We got to tweak this, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? So I get frustrated, <laughs> and like you know, like I have like a vision of like how I I want the the track to go, and he'll like tweak it and he'll change things and he'll keep pushing you and pushing you, and yeah, it does break you down. You get you get discouraged. You start to lose your spirit, but then you hear the final product and you're like, oh, okay, I can't. Yeah, I fuck with this now. Like you know what I mean? And it's like. Yeah, that that's what went through my head where it's like I understand that like in the moment as a person, like as the as the talent, when you have somebody who you're working with, who is constantly telling you <clears throat> it's not quite there, like you got to you can go bet you can do better than that. Like you're <clears throat> you get frustrated because you're thinking, yo, I'm giving it my all. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? What is he what is he know about perfection? You know what I mean? He's behind the scenes kind of thing. Right. Not to say that I'm I ever thought about that. In regards to you, Darcy, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, like I I get I get the initial push, and like you know if um, if you're working with somebody who who has a particular vision and they see the potential in you, and they they just want you to get to that level, and they're they're just trying to get you to give it your your one hundred your your absolute best, one hundred and ten percent all the way, right? So Dr. Dre is another example of that who actually pushes a lot of his artists, like you know they'll be working for hours in the studio before they actually cut a track, right? And that's why he takes so long to produce his own stuff, right? Because he's just striving for perfection, right? Sometimes in, in that regard, it can be, you know, um, you know, it can be debilitating for you because it's like you're 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 pushing too hard to the point where it's like you're you're trying to strive for something that is like unreachable in a sense. Um but like you said, Umar, like he has a lot of pressure under his belt in terms of the, this ba Batman franchise, right? Because yeah. you know, not to mention Robert Pattinson, like nobody believes in this guy right now. And and they, a majority of people have shat on him in terms of like his ability to portray Batman effectively, right? So there's that. So I think um, he knows that and he's trying to get Robert, he's, he's trying to like, Get the performance out of Robert that's going to transcend everything, right? Where you're gonna look, you're gonna look back and be like, man, like Christian Bale was great, but Robert Pattinson really set the bar super, super high. Like Christian Bale set the bar here, and Robert Pattinson just like elevated that. Yeah. 
So, yeah, that's my opinion on it. Durst? So, one, uh, I'm sorry, I crushed your spirits a couple of times there, Tactics. <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and on that note, um, something that, that I, I, I'm going to kind of segue this in, but like I've learned over the years is like um, you have to, when you're in that position, get better at something I've worked to get better at using way more positive reinforcement than, than, than negative. And since we're closer, sometimes I'll just be more blunt with you. <laughs> 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 really not in it. Um, but. <sighs> Here's what I'm going to transition to something and bring it right back. So we're talking about the pressures that that, that are on Matt Reeves, right? Yeah. I don't know Matt Reeves' particular directorial style, right? Um, I We've seen what he did in terms – I don't mean like his output, but I mean like what it's like to actually work with him on a day-to-day. Right. Right. But we've, we've seen what he's produced with um, the Planet of the Apes uh, uh, trilogy, right? And – He's worked with people in that. That, um, what's his name? Uh, what, what's our what's our the guy who played Caesar? Um, um, Andy oh, Circus. Andy Circus. A- Andy Circus. Andy Circus strikes me as a guy who him and Matt Reeves would get along very well. They, he strikes me as a guy who would push himself to a level of perfection that Matt Reeves would be begging for, and they're both on that path. Like, like the, the wouldn't he wouldn't he wouldn't have to push him as hard because he's already going to del- be pushing himself, right? You know what I mean? Like Matt Reeves wouldn't have to push Andy as hard because Andy would push him, himself along the way. Yeah. But so I don't know if Matt Reeves is typically difficult or if it's just the fact that like uh, <laughs> on a regular. But I want to pull something out for a second. Did you guys see what the thing that happened with Tom Cruise recently? The one where he freaked out at the, his his crewmate, uh, the crewmates yeah. who were not wearing masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first off, I'll be I'll I'll just be straight with this. Like I, I back Tom Cruise and what everything I, that yeah. happened there. Period. And one of the things he talked about there was like how because Mission Impossible is a huge like franchise, right? Yeah. And and Tom Cruise runs his own production company, so he can do all of his own stunts, right? And he's talking about being on the phone with insurance companies and movie studios, like all the movie studios, not even the ones that like he's that, that are wor- he's working with, the other ones, because they're all trying to figure out and trying to look at whoever's got the biggest franchise, and they're like they're clearly just trying, to bu- everyone's trying to buddy up and figure out how to work through the storm, right? They don't care about we're in competition right now. We do we need to make it happen, and I feel like that pressure is on Matt Reeves too, right? You know. Yeah. Right, like so, there's going to be a level to this that it's like it's going to be way harder, like, way, way, way harder. So I have some sympathy for Matt Reeves, and the Batman. I'm sorry, but that's harder than Mission Impossible from a from a um, an expectations perspective. Like yeah. we we just expect that like Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise is going to do something crazy because he's going to do it, <laughs> period. Yeah. Like he's going to do something crazy. <laughs> And that's kind of what we show up for. Everything else, I don't really care. Like yeah. I don't, I don't care about the superb acting. Batman, I, I care about the acting. I really care yeah. about about the well, delivery. Like, well, yeah, because you're playing two characters essentially. Yeah, but like if you just don't even know how to say a Batman line right, mm-hmm. like, if you don't have the confidence, you don't have the that 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 stoicness, you don't have all those right nuances into that Batman moment where he comes out and says like <clears throat> a vengeance or whatever. Like if be, it feels wrong, it's gonna be wildly off, right? And I don't care how Tom Cruise says I'm vengeance. I don't care. He can say it however he wants. I'm like, cool. If you say it, I'm, I'm bump fist bump. We're good to go. But so <laughs> I just think that there's like, I kind of feel like, even though I feel for for um, Robert Pattinson, yeah, Petty Pattinson. Um, <laughs> 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 I don't, I feel more for Matt Reeves and what he's trying to do. And I, I bet you, from what we've heard in the past, that Pattinson's, you know, yeah, he's breaking easy, but I think it's because he's also not coming to the table like how Andy Serkis would come to the table. I think if Andy Serkis was playing a role, uh, like like a pivotal <laughs> a, a, in the center of a film, and Matt Reeves had to be like, we, we really got to push, I don't think that Andy would be over here. He'd be like pushing with them. They'd be out at the end of the day drinking whiskey together, both ready to break from the work that they just put in. They Their spirits might be breaking from the pressure, but they would still probably show up the next day and just keep doing it anyways. I think it, I think it's, a, it's a, an alignment of like 
values a little bit. I don't know. I'm just I'm going too hard. To, to be honest, like no, I, I'm with both of you on this because like I'm actually happy to hear this news. Like, uh, I in no way have any real sympathy for Robert Pattinson. This is a guy who didn't even prepare for the role and tried to claim it as like a, a like a Me Too movement sort of thing. Uh, so it, sound, it just sounds like someone was being he was just being lazy to begin with. <laughs> me and, too too. <laughs> Hashtag yeah. Me too too. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so like for me like I. I'm happy to hear this because I my sympathies are with Matt Reeves. He's been wanting to tell a story, and he's been literally impeded from telling that story. And now his actor has been causing him problems. So, and what I like now is the fact that um, it, it, it's the conversation. The last time we talked about this, we were worried about like the actor having all the power, and like him being able to like dictate terms to the director now that his face has been put out there now that like everything's been like taken care of uh in terms of like online so everyone knows that robert Pattinson's on on point so he has all the power but now it looks like the director's like i have a vision to tell i'm not letting you screw this up and also i'm getting this right like i'm not going to be like oh i'll just phone it phone it in because what could i have done it's like no, no no i'm going to do my job I have a question. Sorry, go ahead, Tactus. No, I was just gonna say, have you guys ever seen the movie uh, Whiplash, Miles Teller? Not yet. I, oh, I do. I, I do. Want to see it. You gotta watch. It's on Netflix I know, right I, now. I know, but, I know. I know. Um, there's a beautiful monologue in the movie where, um, and just to kind of set up a bit, little backstory. So it's uh, the, Miles Teller's character. He wants to become like you know world's famous drummer or whatever, and he does. He he's like a jazz drummer. Um, and uh, what's his, what's the guy's name? Uh, JK, JK. JK Simmons. Yeah. So he's like this, you know, world renowned um, musical teacher, but he, he kind of pushes the envelope and like does like, he's just batshit crazy w with his teaching methods and, and whatnot. And so um, one of the monologues, it reminds me of this particular situation where um, he was saying, JK Simmons is basically telling him that uh, he's explaining his methods in terms of like how, why he's so harsh. And he was saying how, um, um, oh shit, what was the line? It was um, the best thing that you can say to somebody is good job. And Miles Teller responds by saying, yeah, but is, is there ever a line? Like, do you ever like, like what if you cross the line and you go too far and like you discourage that next best you know, artist or mu a musician or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, no, there, there is no line because the person that I pushed to that, to that point would never get discouraged. And to me, that's, that really spoke volumes in terms of this scenario, right? Where it's like, you know, sometimes you have these like teachers who, yeah, they, their, their methods are a little bit rash and, and, and very harsh, but you know, it's, it, it, it's it basically to kind of um, separate the, the strong from the weak, essentially, right? And so with Patterson and the fact that he's playing Batman, Batman. Like a, a role that has been played by some of the world's great, like some of the best actors out there right now, like, you know, like um, in terms Keaton. of voice, yeah, Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, like these, like you're standing on like the shoulders of giants right now when you're playing that George role, Clooney. Right? George, George Clooney. He's actually a great actor, just not, not that movie. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I had you, oh, yeah. I had you. Because you're like world's best actor. Like, he actually is one of the world's best actors. It's facts, it's facts. Just, oh. not in, just not in that movie. But um, yeah, man. So it, it's like he's got some heavy shoes to fill, man. It, it's like you should be pushing, like, you should be pushing your limits. And like, sometimes you, like, this is why people hire, hire personal trainers because it's like, yeah. You know, when I work out, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll admit, I don't always push myself to the limit that I know I could get to because my mind is always telling me, oh, okay, you know, it's good enough. It hurts just enough. But when you have a trainer saying, you know, no, no, one more, you got one more in you. And you're, it's, it's kind of that extra oomph that you need to break over that mental hurdle. And so yeah. I think this is the, the, this is what's happening right now with, uh, with Patterson, right? He's like, he's, he's, he's not reaching his, his ed he's not playing to his edge. He's like coming, falling just short of it. And Matt Reeves is, I think he's pushing him. Is just like, no, I see more in you. I believe in you. I need you to go higher, take it to the next level. So, yeah. I mean, I, I hope so. I feel like the the break that 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 Patterson got probably th threw him and allowed his mind to go where wherever it went with the first COVID break. And then it's just been like an onslaught of him exhausting himself out, like maybe patterson's the kind of person like he'll get himself in a headspace and you have him locked in for 
you know, two months. And if you go consistently, he'll be good for that period of time. But then if you let him break, he like, it's almost like losing method acting in a way, in a weird way or something where he just like falls out of, of the motivation to do the thing. And he's very like that kind of creative, which could be super negative and super positive at the same time. And it seems to be in this case. Yeah. Um, the Here's the one thing though. Here's, here's a question I was going to ask is like, is the, I honestly feel like we're at risk of losing Patterson in this role, right? Like there's just so much, so much, if all these rumors and everything we're hearing are hundred percent factual, right? There's like something physically or mentally physically. I don't mean like dying, like him, like him, him like piecing out, Pe- oh, him piecing okay. out. Like even though he's contractually obligated for what three films and most people would just gruel it out or work out uh, something. I, I get the feeling he'll just, he's the kind of person he might, he might get to a point and he might just bail. Right. Like he might just like he might peace out and it'll be a whole legal thing that we don't hear all the details of. But like that is career suicide if he does that. Yeah. Like honestly, no one no I, I one know. But there's something about him that makes me feel like he's that emotional. I wouldn't say so because he stuck it out for the for, for the Twilight franchise. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> That that is fair. That is fair. <laughs> I like, mean, <laughs> and he went on record as saying he hated that franchise. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, my question was gonna be like, what, what, what do you think would happen if we didn't lose him? But anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. So mo- moving on to our next uh, agenda item, we have all seen the One Woman 1984 movie, correct? Yes. That was the, that was the one that that happened. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that when I brought it up, tactics like puts his hand like, puts his hand right in there. <laughs> uh, I, I saw this last night, bro. So it's still oh. fresh in my mind. Oh, oh okay, all right. So like like three days for me. <laughs> uh, I saw it uh, the day of, uh, like when it came out. Oh man, you you was all over that. Yeah, and then I saw it again with my mom because <laughs> she likes Wonder Woman, which was a surprise to me. So uh, yeah, we we watched the first, uh, we watched both of them actually. So uh, now I would like to do a review of this. So it's tactics since this is fresh in your mind. I would like for you to go first. Yo, this movie was boring as fuck, man. <laughs> Holy, I've never been so bored in my life while watching a movie, man. Like I like. I'm, I'm there watching it, and like the opening scene was like phenomenal. I was I was digging it, right? Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, so this is setting the tone for how the rest of the movie is gonna go. <laughs> I hope, right? And then all of a sudden, like nothing is happening, man. It's just like, yo, you want to make a wish, blah blah blah, like you wish, wish, wish. And I'm like, can someone just punch someone now, please? Like, what's going on with this movie? And then, yeah, like honestly, like I fe- I feel like they set they set a particular tone in the first one. And then they completely deviated with this movie. It felt so campy and cartoony, and the the CGI is fucking terrible. Like that lasso yes. is so distracting because I'm just like, what the <laughs> fuck is that, man? It took me out of the movie completely, man. Um, uh, like the acting was uh, okay, <laughs> but I'm just like, is this the same? Like with the uh, Pedro Pascal, I'm like, this is Mandalorian. Like he's just ah, uh, I'm just like I'm so surprised right now, man. I don't know. Like I, I gave this like a like, like a generous four out of ten. Oh okay. Oh, oh shit. Like, it, it yo, was fucking. Yo. That that's how bad it was, man. I'm like I had a better time watching Suicide Squad than I did this. What? Wow. Yeah. Wow. God, man, you and, you, and I you, hate Suicide Squad. Yo, you really hated this film. Wow. Okay. This movie, Okay. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of the old spilled spill movie ratings, and you're 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 in the the, the sum of bullshit uh, this is category. Some old bullshit. It almost bounced down to a fuck you and came right back up to <laughs> yeah. <some old> bullshit. <laughs> wow. Like what? Like what was what was so spectacular about the movie? Like tell like tell me one good thing that right. was spectacular. Right. We'll get to that. We'll get to that question. Uh, no, we'll get to it now because there's <laughs> nothing. There is nothing spectacular about this movie. It was I terrible. Some, I have some things, but like I, I want to hear Darcy's things first. Uh, FYI, uh, spoiler warning because mm. we haven't said anything yet. But like spoiler warning. Yeah. So I get... couldn't. You couldn't spoil this movie. That's how bad it is. <laughs> nothing happens in this movie. Like seriously, so, nothing happens. So... And then that end credit scene. I I appreciate the 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 novelty Not... of it, but. Like, come on! It, 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 
it hurt you by that point. Yeah, I was just like, come on, at least give me some kind of setup for like another movie or like it, like Cheetah is not not really or she's you know she's still kind of Cheetah again or something. I don't know. Like, give me a little tease of what's to come. Damn, I've never seen you that angry before. No, you have, but I'm mad again, man. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right, Dars. All right, so. This movie I'm, sucked. <laughs> I don't feel like I got an opportunity to speak yet. Tax, you need to hold hold I'm yourself sorry. together. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna give this movie my my generous rating of. I'm debating if I want to give that half point or not give that half point. Uh, it's either a zero or point five. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's uh, two fuck yous, bro. That's what it is. That's the rating that you want to give right now. No, I'm gonna give my 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 generous rating of six point five. Wow! So- <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Yo, he got up to left, bro. Tell me you're lying. So, so he, I will fully admit that there is a level of um, COVID lack of content playing as 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 a weight into into most of the movies these days, but. So here's the thing. I enjoyed the movie, but I He's almost probably gonna like Soul, man. He's probably gonna <laughs> love the ending of Soul. Hold on, man. That's a different conversation. We gotta hold off on that one. Okay. So the the thing is I I was entertained, but in the way where I was almost kind of at a lot of times forgetting that it was a DC film. Like it was okay. just like a general film. Yeah. There were moments that I really enjoyed. But, and ironically, I enjoyed not the character, but I enjoyed Pedro Pascal's performance of a character that I thought was kind of lame. Yeah. Um, but I like how he sold the lameness. Like he's like, if yeah. you're gonna be a, if you're gonna be that character, at least commit. He committed to it like a hundred percent. Like I I appreciate what he did. Just it's again, it's kind of like what if Ray Fisher Cyborg turns out to be amazing? It's not going to make the Justice League a significantly better film, more than likely. But it's just like if what if we, his acting is really good? Yeah. Um. But there's there's one way that this kind of summarizes this film is that I was watching something on this and I was like trying to understand like what was bugging me about the film, the thing that, that did bug me, and, the, and they're like the this person basically summarizes it, it's like if this movie didn't happen, it literally would have the same impact on the universe because like literally everything that happened was essentially erased so therefore there was no consequences and also the, the one person made, made a point was like so by the time you got around the justice league like bvs and stuff like that like how did nobody ever reference the the, the wish era of the 1980s like, like in the universe, post this. Like, how did nobody have? Like, how there's no documentation, representation, nothing in the whole whole remaining universe where people talk about? Remember that time when people could just wish for anything, like nuclear bombs? <laughs> like, <and> it <laughs> happened. Like, all in one day. Like, nobody. This didn't happen. So, again, I like the intro. The intro was was sick. That 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 was great to see the 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 uh, Themyscira. Yeah. There were things I liked just in, in terms of people's acting, but it just wasn't like, why did it need to be like this epic world ending event again? Why couldn't it have been something else? Why did we have to deal with her, her love, like Trevor all over again for like, I get why we're trying to like grow her emotionally, but it felt pointless to do that. Um, There's a lot of things that are pointless, but there were still parts of it that just was like, okay, I was semi entertained. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to give my review now. Uh, so I would say when I first watched it, I gave this movie a... I was being generous as well. I gave it a 6.5. However, however, upon second viewing with my mom, I gave I dropped it down to an official 6. <laughs> Tagging is great. <laughs> He's, he's like we. None of us are brothers anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you guys are super generous in COVID season, bro. Yeah. So I will give the first. I'll give the reasons why I liked it, and then I'm going to go into. I'm going to launch into my problems. So I liked predominantly. I liked the first two thirds of the film. Oh, let's say the first half of the film. I really liked the acting uh, with ev- from everyone, even though what they were being asked to do was dumb. I still like their acting. 
I actually really like the storyline between uh, uh, Steve Trevor and uh, Diana. My only problem was the fact that they took over another man's body, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll cover that into uh, like my, my problems with it. Uh, I liked uh, some of the action sequences, and I really like Kristen Wiig, uh, and I actually really like how Maxwell Lord turn turn himself into the stone. I found that to be like a unique play on the, on like the trope, and also mm-hmm. it made it interesting, like what needed to be done in order to like take him down. So all that stuff I was enjoying, all that stuff was going well. I liked the the flying through the fireworks stuff, their like banter, all that sort of thing. So all that was going well. And now I'm going to launch into what I had a problem with. The entire last third of the film made absolutely no sense. And once like, I noticed that it kind of retroactively took away from certain parts of the first film, first part of the first parts of the, of the film. Also, Diana and Steve kind of raped a man's body for no reason. This wish could clearly bring, like, invent walls that covered a city it could plop up nuclear weapons throughout the uh, throughout the planet so it couldn't bring back a soul and a body of a man that she loved okay. yeah uh and they didn't need that they didn't need that at all it, like we knew in the we knew in every single single advertisement that chris pine was back so it wasn't a surprise that he just showed up in another man's body it was stupid uh, the entire ending fight sequence, uh, my, even my mom was like, this is a jar. Like, my mom asked me to fast forward the entire, like, I renounce my wish portion and, like, where's my son shit. Like, it was jarring. It was boring. It made no sense. It went on for fucking forever. And it just was, and the, why did she turn into a cheetah? She said she wanted to be an apex predator for the first time ever in the film. Like, yes, we got a line that she was a, a zoologist at the beginning, but like, why did she want to be an apex predator? Also, how is a cheetah an apex predator? It's not one. If she wanted to be a lion or a tiger, then yeah, but like, a cheetah isn't an apex predator. So, like, yeah. what? Also, if the dude renounced his wish and he was the wish guy then wouldn't he wouldn't all the wishes go away and yes i agree with you darcy if a a, like a worldwide worldwide calamity has taken place everyone just gonna forget about it yeah like like was 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 like the the power of this wish thing that it had like a men in black event at the end where you go Poof! oh memories are forgotten but like, like, they and also they needed to have everyone renounce the wish if the dude renounced his wish and he's the wish grantor, doesn't that mean it? Like, why did you write yourself in the corner? You, you know, like also you're you're saying this before. Like, there's this giant contradiction between how it manifests things because it was like it was playing between the concept. I'm gonna pull from Full Metal here, the concept of equivalent exchange yeah. and then not having equivalent exchange. Like, we need a guy's body, but these walls come out come out of nowhere. I guess you could say, well, the walls come out because they come from the ground that that or they're there. So therefore, there's an equivalent exchange, and there were things that were like that in the sense that like okay so uh at first i thought when what's her name who's becoming cheetah when he said like i want to be like wonder woman i actually said this out loud to to my to my partner but then i realized later on that wasn't the case you're like oh it's making wonder woman weaker because it's pulling siphoning her power then you find out it's like no she's just getting stronger gal gadot's losing power because her equivalent exchange is having the soul of a man brought back that needed a body and then um, the, the, then the the exchange, the equivalent exchange for the cheetah characters that she loses her personality and her character to become more powerful. Like, and I'm like, okay, that's just a, too easy of a trope. That's too easy to say, oh, with power, you lose yourself, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's like how often we heard that. I would have rather had the cheetah character actually siphoning Wonder yes. Woman's power. And honestly, like the guy that basically got raped in this film his presence didn't add anything. It didn't add a layer of complexity. They didn't address it. Like no. it, it was just, it happened, right? It, it, otherwise, it would have made more sense just to manifest them out of, out of thin blue air because it was the equivalent, right? If it was, a, okay, they brought his body and then that added layers that they had to deal with, 
<laughs> See, you're so mad right now. You're like, I can't even listen to you guys. <laughs> oh. Call it like it is, man. This movie is trash. <laughs> the thing is, I don't disagree. Story wise, it was trash. Yeah. There was just like enough. There was enough moments that I actually enjoyed stuff until like like talk, or Umar said like near the end. I like Gal Gadot's performance of one woman. This I just don't like what she was written in to do. I like you know the the woman who played Cheetah, but her fundamental ideas around how her character became what it is was stupid. I love Pe- Pedro Pesca- Pascal's performance. It just wasn't like it just didn't make a lot of sense by the end of it. You know, like there's a lot of yeah. like it just like. It's it's a problem with the writing, you know, yeah. if, if anything. And to be honest, like this was written by Patty Jenkins and Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns is a big comic book writer. He basically revolutionized uh, Green Lantern and all that sort of stuff. But of late, I've from my own personal experiences, he was the one who wrote uh, Three Jokers. I'm not sure if you guys read that or watched the YouTube videos uh, tactics. Um, Personally, I feel that Jeff Johns has lost his touch. He's kind of going the way of Frank Miller. Uh, no, he's not going as insane as Frank Miller. But like this movie, kind of proves that yo, this didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, it it that 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 that's its its, it's biggest problem. And again, I I I I mean, I kind of almost want the Zack Snyder drops a like a just a joke about wishing. In, in 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 his cut, like nothing that like really references it or connects it, just as like a someone making a stupid statement, like yeah, as if the whole world could just wish for that or something like that, and you're just like, nice, <laughs> you know. T, T, are you still our friend? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> like six is really high, man. Like <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm in shock because I, uh, I, 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 I'll agree with some of the points in terms of. Yeah, like Gal Gadot wasn't wasn't terrible. Um, I liked I liked the chemistry between her and and Steve Trevor. Um, Cheetah Cheetah ha- to me was the most interesting in the movie, yeah. but I feel like she was underused. I don't. Completely I would have I would have loved to see more of her. And I I agree with you, Darcy. I didn't like. I didn't. Li- I would have much rather that you know she was getting her the, like she was siphoning the power from wonder woman as opposed to it just being she's yeah. losing her personality as a result of that that exchange right um i was not impressed with the final fight scene it was just too jarring for me like the, like it's so hard to see what's going on and it just felt like a, lot, a whole bunch of just this and then on top of that it was in the dark so it was hard to really make out what what she to look like <laughs> I just got why Uber was laughing. <laughs> it just looked like this. Every guy's fantasy. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, yeah. Not- and then like yeah. after after the Themyscira scene, like it just it a lot of stuff just kind of dragged on for, for so long. And it was just kind of like, come on, like just get to the main point of what you're trying to do. Like it, I don't know. I just wasn't happy with the storyline. There were some interesting beats there but for the most part none of the action scenes really grabbed me in a way like yeah. it was it wasn't anything that like really it was it's nothing that i hadn't seen before and i i was expecting more and then on top of that the whole flight thing was like really convenient like she just automatic like she's just like in the air you know and all of a sudden she knows how to fight or so she, she knows how to fly oh the the, the other thing the, the lasso of truth how it caught the the fucking bullet, bullet. <laughs> was so, oh my gosh, man. I was like, that. I'm checked out at that point. <laughs> That's like a Spider-Man move. I am checked out. Yeah, it was like, and it had like the little hand thing. It was like, it looked like it grabbed it. Like, I was <laughs> like, what is going on with this shit right now, man? So yeah, I, I don't know, man. It was just a lot of cheese. Too much cheese for me. And I'm yeah, not I, think, I, think like, I, like, repli- I think they were trying to replicate the 80s cheese, but I'm like, guy, don't do that. It was just too much. Like yeah, I would, yeah. I would have liked it if they kept the cheese for that beginning scene, the the at the mall, and, just and then it yeah, just leave it there. I, I get what you're trying to do with this whole montage thing and like having it be an '80s feel kind of thing. If they had just left it there, I'd be cool with that. But my, like one of my main problems is like this movie is a two and a half hour film. This was not a short film, and yeah, it was way too there, long. the characterization was rushed. Where did the time go? You have all this time and you're going to rush characterization? That's why I'm like, no, I can't give you, like, I can't respect you if you do that. Yeah, yeah. 
it it had a lot i just really wish they they, they flushed this out better yeah. like the, i really think that they should have built this all around the concept of equivalent exchange i don't think this should have ended with an epic world ending thing i think it should have been a much smaller movie just cheetah uh, and just cheetah and wonder woman maxwell lord could have been the third movie guy yeah i i feel like because the uh, you, you guys are talking about the the ending fight scene i kind of was like oh yeah i forgot about the ending fight scene because for me the movie wasn't really a, an action film Right, like it, 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 like it was, but it, that's not what I remember about it. It's not what stood out to me. And I feel like if they kind of made this movie way more about difficult choices for mm-hmm. Wonder Woman, and they and and they barely even came to any fighting, it was just like, how does she handle moral dilemma? Mm-hmm. And that's the growth of the character. And they use qu- equivalent exchange, so it puts her in um impossible um uh choices between two two negatives right and can she rise to making a third or or how does she choose um i think that if you made it more of a a drama in that perspective and then you have the action that's wonder woman but you don't you just don't make it about some giant superhero uh oh my gosh she saved everything moment you just like just focus on the drama i think you could have gone you could got a much better film out of it yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to go to our final topic uh, for today, uh, which is the uh, two. We're essentially entering an era where we're going to have two different Batman universes at the same time. So I'm going to have my man uh, Tactics explain this because, like, I actually didn't know this until he brought it up. Yeah, I was just watching uh, John Campia talk about it. The, how? Um, who, what, who's the Who's the president of? Uh, of DC, like the DC extended universe or who it's, it's a new, it's a new CEO at, um, Oh, um, uh, Darcy, you, uh, Googling that. I'm on it. Anyway, on it. that, that guy, he basically announced that they want to do two, um, separate Batman universes. So basically the one that we already have with Ben Affleck, although Ben Affleck won't be reprising his role as uh, Batman slash Bruce Wayne. It's, they're going to replace him with somebody else, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, soon to be determined. And then obviously the Matt Reeves, uh, the Batman version with uh, Patterson, right? So Patterson. Pa- what's that? Pattinson. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so they're they're basically doing the two universes at, uh, simultaneously. And yeah, I, well, I honestly, I don't even know what to expect or if I'm even really excited about the DC EU anymore. Honestly, because, DC like, is, they, oh God, like yeah. they, they're not learning their, their stuff. Cause like, honestly, <clears throat> we already have a like cr- critically s- unanimous pan on almost every DC film. The only one I know that is a good film and also was done relatively well, is Shazam. Followed that by Wonder Woman, followed that by Aquaman. And then it's all shit after that. Yeah. Shazam is... Oh, uh, I, I mean, the, Birds of Prey was also... Uh, eh, it was it was all right, but like... It was, was boring. The, from what I hear. the thing that they suffered the most from is they really shouldn't have had... They should have used stunt people. You should, should use stunt women to replace a lot of the. They had this big like one kind of. Um, Ooh, yeah, it's, yeah. And and I was watching even a stunt person's review on this on the the corridor crew show, and they were, and they had, like a stunt guy, re, a professional talking about. It, and he's like, thing is like if they if they given them more time, and to really learn this stuff, like it would have been. It could have been good, but they didn't have time, and they really should just put stunt people in there because if you're not good at and have the movement for fight choreogra- choreography, your punches look stupid. Like they just <laughs> they look dumb. And some of the the, 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 the fighting they had is like you just it's it was uh, it, it it was reminiscent of um, Star Wars Last Jedi, uh, the 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 scene where they were Ray and 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 um, what's this. Kyla Ren do that 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 fight, um, back, back, like when they took on the the guards. Yeah, they took on the red guards and the and, and 
Oh, oh my god! You, you, well, you, you gotta watch it in slow mo, bro. <laughs> you gotta watch it in slow mo. A lot of the stunt people are waiting for Ray to be ready, like the actor actress, and she's not ready. So they're like, they're like saying in the background, like they're just, just like, falling. Bro. <laughs> oh, there, there are so many times that she would have really died if they were fighting. Like they, she would got her head t- chopped off or, or hit hit in the back. But the the stunt guy's like, oh, I'll just I'll just be over here then. All right, all right. <laughs> just wait, waiting. So, anyways, had a lot of that where like some people are like moving and kind of waiting for the action because right. they're not they're not able to move fast enough right. to, to keep up. Um, but it, it also was the 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 executive Walter Hamada. Is that who it was? Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyways, th- to go on what you're saying, this whole DC DC just keeps keep messing it up. Honestly, this is gonna confuse people. Like already, people are like, wait. Is this is Matt Rotten Pattinson supposed to be like a younger Ben Affleck? And it's like no, it's separate. And, and like not a lot of people know that. And also people are going to be like, so why am like why are they redoing Batman f- already while Batman is still also happening? Like that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, they've kind of painted themselves into a corner, right? Like because by just starting Matt Reeves' Batman version of it, right? Because they're still continuing to make. DCEU movies with Wonder Woman, Aquaman 2 is probably going to come out uh, uh, soon. And they have yeah. The Flash, which I don't even know what's going on with that anymore. Um, so it's like they can't really, they, they've, they've, they've kind of put themselves in a corner where they can't really throw out all that other stuff because they already have plans for that. But now they're also setting up this new universe and like, you know, ideally they could they could just stop with the Batman and just make that its own trilogy, kind of like the Christopher Nolan version. Yeah. Um, but I don't know to what extent they want to extend this, ver- this this that particular universe. Like if they want to make it more grounded, like how Nolan did it, and then just start to introduce other characters. Like does Superman exist in this same world, or is it grounded like Nolan's films? To be honest, I think if they had decided to, if DC had, or Warner Brothers, excuse me, <coughs> if they had decided to do like the opposite of what uh, Marvel did and do like independent films from now on after doing Justice League and also having that fail. I would have been fine with like, no one would have cared to be honest if everyone started doing their own independent films and like no more Justice Leagues take place and like on occasion, maybe a cameo from like uh, someone else coming in, but like no team ups or anything like that. I think that would have been fine. But now the fact that they're going to do like, a, well, first of all, they're going to, so imagine me trying to explain, like, uh, a newbie to the DCEU. By the way, this, like, and who would you, okay, who would you guys want to replace Ben Affleck? Shit, man, uh, I don't know. That's, okay, a long, that's too much time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I would say that, let's say, like, Ben Affleck's replacement is, like, the modern Batman. And this is also after the Batman has, the Batman has come out with Robert Pattinson. I'm t- I'm bringing someone to see, to see these movies. I see the le- latest movie, and they're like, "Okay, so who's this?" I'm like, "That's Batman." And it's like, I thought Rotten Pattinson was Batman. He is Batman, but that's from a different like that's not related to this. They're like, oh, "Okay, but wasn't Ben Affleck Batman?" It's like, "Yes, they replaced him with this person." <clears throat> you know this what? Is a, this is a horrible situation for, to put someone in. You know what? You know what? With the way that DC has been running things so far, it it makes me less excited to want to see. A Justice League movie, like I, I kind of don't want to see any more team up with DCU. I just want them to focus on individual storylines and make them darker. I think if Wonder Woman, if they made it less cheesy and a little bit more dark, you know what I mean. And I know dark is kind of like a. You a, don't need dark. You need mature, but you need well written. Yeah, that, that's that, that's what I mean. Like I, I think they just need to like stop trying to build up to a universe like how Marvel is doing it because Marvel. They can be very lighthearted and still have some mature content, uh, but with DC, I want it to be kind of reminiscent of their their older animated stuff, like Thank those you. kind yeah. of storylines. You know what I mean? I, I feel like for the word dark, I think I want to replace it with like a mix of drama and thriller inside of a superhero esque thing, and I don't mean like a dark, dark, like 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 heavy drama. Yeah. Just that level of maturity that happens when you have the when you in dramas where you have these deep seated questions that the characters have to solve um, that, you know, these dilemmas and then you, and you have thrill of like uncovering a mystery if that's what the, especially with a Batman film, but with, with something else, like you just, something that, that gives it these layers of yeah. maturity that you go, whoo, like, wow. Like, you know, I can't believe like how Superman solved that, you know? Yeah. Like put it this way, like the, the dark Knight is considered 
a comic book movie only because there's people wearing costumes. That's what that's how I feel about it. Like yeah. outside of that, it it's it, it can be its own kind of movie, like its own kind of entity in a, in a sense, right? Like you know, like that's that's the kind of movie that I want. Like where it's like it it doesn't feel like a comic book movie. Like when I watch The Dark Knight, I'm I almost forget that I'm watching like a superhero film. For me, what I want is and and this is and Zack Snyder is the cause of this, and I hope if. He, he his influence goes away i want these characters no one who is creating these films well minus uh patty jenkins no one really understands the characters i think matt reeves understands the char- the character of batman and that's why he's like we're both we're all very happy with what the batman looks like because he understands what the character is yeah they do not understand Zack snyder does not understand who superman is he doesn't understand who a uh, uh, Batman is. He doesn't understand anything. He's 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 like a, a frat boy who read comics. Is like this is how it should be, yeah. and I'm t- and I want it to be like these films can be mature and dark and interesting and also dramatic and also very poignant if you follow the comic books or f- at least fulfill what the character is. Now we're running yeah. out of time, so we probably should say goodbye. But that was my last thought. Yeah. So. so uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, we'll end on that note. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'm your boy Tactics. It's your boy Darcy, or just Darcy. <laughs> and it's Big Geek Kumar. Live long and prosper, y'all. Like and subscribe. <laughs>